The break is presented by Browning Trail Cameras. You've got to see this. Closed captioning is brought to you by Antler Extreme Nutritional Deer Products. It's a new beginning for the break as we kick things off for 2017. From where we started, I'm not sure if anyone thought we'd still be around today, but we're still going strong and things are getting better every year. In fact, 2017 is shaping up to be our best year ever. In this episode, we'll show you some of the highlights of what you're gonna see this season, but it's also gonna be a history lesson on the break so you can see where we started, some behind the scenes, and how far we've come in a short amount of time. Stay tuned, you're watching the break. In the opener, I said it was a new beginning for the break. It's a new beginning because we're expanding our television footprint with additional broadcast partners. This certainly isn't the beginning of the break though. In fact, we got started back in 2011. A few of you watching today may have seen some of our earliest stuff, either online or on another network. But since we've added new broadcast outlets, I'm guessing there are quite a few of you who know absolutely nothing about us. So to start, we're gonna give you a history lesson on the break, what we're about, where we started, and how we've grown over the years. The break is about the non-professional hunter. Hunting is a passion, an obsession, a way of life, but it's not our job. We all have normal jobs from railroaders to insurance agents to small business owners. We're just your everyday guys that love hunting and carry a camera with us to hopefully entertain. That's it. For me personally, the seed for videoing hunts was planted way back in the mid 90s. Myself, Joe Henneman, and Craig Heiser videoed some of our first hunts back then. Joe's dad had this giant camcorder that used VCR tapes, and we'd lug that thing into the woods with us, but we never were successful. Not that we didn't kill deer back then, but we never had the camera with us. Nobody wanted to be the cameraman and waste a whole day of hunting running the camera, so we gave it up, but seeing the explosion of the hunting industry over the last 15 years, I always regretted not continuing that. So with technology improvements, it became easier for a novice to run a camera and actually hunt while doing so, self-videoing. So for the 2011 season, I decided to give it a shot once again. I bought a camcorder and a cheap tree arm and I was after my first deer kill on camera. Got it done in the last minute before I headed to Orlando for Disney World with the kids. Uh, leaving tomorrow afternoon. So, got the job done. That's what I was hoping for. So that was pretty rough. The footage was shaky and I bumped my camera arm on the shot, but I got my first kill on camera and my next goal was to kill a buck on camera. It's November 11th, 2011. 11, 11, 11. I learned a couple things with this hunt. First of all, self-videoing, it's not easy. The shot on that buck wasn't completely in frame, and going forward, if I was gonna continue to self-video, I was gonna have to figure out a way to get the footage. The fix was to run multiple cameras to capture every angle and learn to lead the animal when I'm transitioning from camera to kill. The other thing I learned about this hunt, hunting is about a lot of different things, one of them being the thrill of the hunt. This was just a two and a half year old buck. At that point, I'd killed a handful of four and a half year old or older bucks, but at that moment in time, it didn't matter. I just got my first buck killed on camera and I couldn't have been more thrilled. That is what the break is all about. Getting away from everyday life, enjoying the outdoors, hunting, and being proud of the animal you shoot, regardless of its size or age. The facts are, with everyone on the break, none of us have unlimited time to hunt. We don't manage thousands of acres of continuous ground to where we're only hunting five and a half year old deer. Now don't get me wrong, we're all after the biggest deer in our woods. But more importantly, we're out there to get a break from the stress of everyday life and enjoy the hunt. That's what you'll see on the break.
being the non-professionals that we are doesn't mean we don't want to improve. We certainly do. When we get back from this short break, we'll take a look at some of the things we're doing to become better videographers so the break is a better viewing experience for all of you. Stick with us. We'll be right back. For as long as I can remember, the Browning name has meant something to people in the outdoors. So when I went looking for a trail camera that I could depend on, there was only one name that came to mind, Browning Trail Cameras. So if you're looking for a trail camera that's easy to use, is unbelievably reliable, and takes amazing pictures and videos, there's only one brand that I trust, Browning Trail Cameras. Browning Speed combines advanced fabrics, tailored fit, and innovative camouflage. Hunt harder, faster, and stronger than ever. Speed Killer Clothing. This segment is brought to you by Indian Creek Shooting Systems. As the saying goes, if you're not moving forward, you're falling back. This holds true with us on the break. We have to improve on our footage because we want to bring you the best footage possible and we want you to keep watching. So every year we have a team meeting at my house. All the guys come in from Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Kansas, Illinois, and everywhere else we're at. We talk about our successes, mistakes, and share ideas to become better. About this one we got you. Mike doesn't even know what's on it. Yeah. Now you can see all this. Yeah. It's a learning experience for all of us. After the meeting, we head across the farm to my parents' place where it's about camaraderie and having a good time. There's plenty of food and drinks, and the highlight of the team get-together is the shoot-off of prizes donated by some of our sponsors. Browning Trail Cameras, Banks Outdoors, Antler Extreme Nutritional Deer Products, CZ USA, Alps Outdoors, Indian Creek Shooting Systems, Bison Coolers, Bresser Optics, Moab Provisions and Bloodsport Archery all pitched in in the shootout this year. TJ Ash was the big winner taking home both Browning Trail cameras and the Banks Outdoors Wild Water Watering System. Jason LaPlante won a Bison Cooler. Clayton Renth got the Alps Outdoors Crossfire Extreme. Brian Johnson took home the Indian Creek Choke Tube and a Bresser Range Finder. Jacob Bressel got a package from CZ USA. Mike McDonald won the Antler Extreme Mineral Package. And Todd Hogan got the Moab Provisions Seasoning Kit. At the end of the night, Daniel Sexton, a good friend and local country music artist, got out his guitar and sang a few of his songs. Kiss me back and forth the world. And I've got a Bible and a rocking chair. Sun sinking down on the Delta sky. My little kids kissing me goodnight. Hey, and I've got it made. Trade one day. I'm greener with another 
trade one day. Our veterans and those currently serving have selflessly volunteered for duty and risked their lives for the benefit of all Americans. With this in mind, the Neistat Foundation was established to show gratitude for these individuals by providing the opportunity to participate in unbelievable outdoor experiences. Each event we organize is strongly rooted in our four guiding principles, respect, integrity, connecting individuals, and empowerment. Visit Neistat.org to discover how you can create a brighter America for those who have sacrificed so much. Well, if you've watched some of the previous episodes of The Break, you know it was a rough start. But comparing our first year to the next, I think we've come a long way. This morning I was hunting down in the creek bottom, and it was a beautiful morning. There's all kinds of mule deer rolling through, some nice mule deer rolling through the, the bottoms and through the creek. And I was really kind of focused on the mule deer, and my guide's with me. He's like, hey, we got some, we got some elk over here. And so we get set up, and, and there's just too much brush, and it, this, this one spot, it just didn't work. So we made a move. So we made this move. We got closer to this, uh, there was actually like a fence line over there. We are trying to get to this fence line because we thought my, they may cross right here. So we got set up, and we really couldn't see them. It was kind of over at that point, and I was kind of getting ready to go back to the truck, uh, just kind of make the trek back, and here they come. So they come out, and it's cows. It's four cows. I think it's actually two cows and two calves, and, uh, and maybe a spike. But there was a legal cow in the, in the group, and like I said, I, was, I wanted to walk away at least with some meat. So she got out there, and I told my, my, guy, my guide, I said, hey, can you know, try to run the camera? And, um, and he did. He was trying to help me spot the right cow and at the same time run the camera. And once again, Craig and I had no experience with these cameras. Uh, we had a lot of, there's a lot of little technical things on here you have to understand to work through. And we just didn't have that figured out yet. And so my guide is working through that. He's trying to figure out the cow that I'm gonna shoot, plus make sure I shoot the right cow. And unfortunately, he just was on the wrong cow. So, and I made a great shot. Actually, the, the cow dropped right there in his tracks and, uh, and we just didn't get it on footage, which is a bummer. And you guys will see, you know, that I'm talking it after the fact with the cow. And then what you're also gonna notice is that I didn't have the volume on. So not only did we miss the cow, and when I'm doing the interview at the end, uh, I did not have the audio part of the whole thing wasn't on, and I thought it was, and so that uh, that was kind of screwed up too. But once again, this is our first time. We're learning the cameras. Our first trip to Colorado. It's uh, Wednesday afternoon. We've got about two and a half days left in the hunt. I'm hunting up in the blind again, over the water. Um, it's gotten really hot. It's warm. It's mid 80s. Um, so last couple of nights they've been coming into the water. So. You just saw my first ever archery kill on film. Thank you so much for being here with me. 
had a blast. Got a nice doe in North Missouri, September 22nd, 2012. God, did you see that? <laughs> okay. Look at that. I just shot a good bug. Awesome. Well, here he is, Cactus. Myself and the team hunters of the break are committed to improving and we're working towards that. Every year we get a little bit better and learn a few more tricks of the trade. When we get back from this short break, we'll take a look at what's in store for this season. I think it's going to be a good one. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Banks Outdoors is the place that connects family. Oh my God. Thank you. Yeah. That was unreal. This is the place that connects friends. Yeah, bro. bro, you did it. What a phenomenal story. This is the place that brings excitement. Three, bro. <laughs> Most importantly, <laughs> this is the place where memories are made. Buddy. Dad, I will never forget this moment. Hey, why, buddy? Neither will I. Why do I shoot in Indian Creek? He's dead in a hammer. Indian Creek, once again. Break has about 30 team hunters spread across eight states right now, and they're really starting to pump out the footage. Pass through. Thank you, brother. Holy cow. So we're running for all 52 weeks in 2017, and we're gonna break the year down into two seasons, the spring season and the fall season. And we'll focus our episodes with the current or upcoming hunting season. In the fall season, we'll see how we did this past year out west, and Joe Hain went up to British Columbia to film Jim Neistat on a moose hunt, which was amazing, and I can't wait for that episode to air later this year. He's down, we're gonna give him a little bit, and then we're gonna move on down the hill at a slow uh, Jim Neistat pace. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank buddy, you, that was a good it. shot. But the primary focus this fall will be on whitetails, of course, and it was a pretty good year for me personally. Another grunt. And here he comes, right here, right next to the crossing, nah. right in front of the Browning Trail camera. If I'm lucky, I got the shot on camera. Holy cow, I didn't even think about that. That could be awesome. I smoked him. I'm gonna look at the footage though to make sure. And then we're gonna get down, we're gonna go get him. Ah. Well, I think I just shot the big six. He's a mature buck, just a six-pointer. Hopefully he's laying just right in there. Holy cow. And it wasn't just me, the entire team had a lot of success this year. We've got some great hunts to look forward to in the fall season of the break, but right now, a lot of us are thinking about turkey season, so that's gonna be our primary focus in the weeks ahead. Check out some of the turkey hunting action you're gonna see this spring.
baby. Turkey master. Awesome. <laughs> so the primary focus during the spring season of the break will be turkey hunting, but we're also going to highlight an organization we're really proud to partner with, the Neistat Foundation. The Neistat Foundation is a charitable foundation that provides hunting, shooting, and outdoor experiences for wounded veterans. We worked with them on two events in 2016. The most recent was called Cast and Blast, which was dove hunting and fishing with a group of active duty soldiers. The first event was called Hunting with Heroes, which was a hog hunt at Gravick Ranch in San Isidro, Texas. It was an awesome event, and it's the episode you'll see next week on The Break. So we'll close this episode with a peek into the Hunting with Heroes event, and I hope you tune in next week to see these hunts with a few of our country's heroes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Hosting hunts for veterans is, has been something that we've always sort of been interested in doing here at Gravick Ranch, and that's where Hunting with Heroes was born. And uh, we hope that this is really gonna be a, a launch for um, more great events in the future. Uh, and with that in mind, we actually went ahead and started a non-for-profit organization called the Neistat Foundation. Uh, and that foundation will be focusing on um, hosting about two to three hunts per year uh, for veterans and, and families of veterans. Didn't miss this time, so thank God. <laughs> this gives me such great honor and a pleasure to be here and to, to offer some support. And we thank you all for your service. Recently, I have met some great friends in the state of Wyoming. And in the state of Wyoming, they started a program called Quilts of Valor. And every veteran is going to be honored with a quilt. If everybody would give them a hand for their service, please. Thank you very much. This has been a Hunter's Link production.